that's all for tonight, Al. Going home? No, Margaret's picking me up here at the station. You want a lift? No, I'm going into Studio A and catch calling all cars. <laughs> You're like a postman taking a hike. <laughs> well, even I can always learn something. You use cracked gasoline? Yeah, and I'm really sold on it, Al. And I'll bet you dough you can tell the difference from any other gas, particularly on hills or when you speed up. Oh, I use it most of the time. You know, I think they got the swellest product story yet. Police cars and fire engines, the state and government, all that stuff. That's what people want to know before they buy. Facts. Al, Al, you didn't plug the line out. Huh? Oh, they caught that at the master board. <laughs> The copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. San Rafael Police calling all cars. Attention all cars broadcast 223. The Guardia Green 1937 Chevrolet Coupe. License unknown. This car was used in a holdup at the gas station Irwin Street and San Quentin Road at 2.15 a.m. this day. That's all. Rolls and quiz. Grande has stuck to one sincere factual sales story. A truth in advertising which we feel has won for this company a type of customer friend loyalty unknown to most commercial products. This is the most priceless possession of industry, your goodwill and confidence. And Rio Grande is committed to a policy of maintaining the superiority of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. A policy the results of which are apparent to anyone. The fact that for years, those who know the most about gasoline and buy the most have overwhelmingly chosen Rio Grande Crack. The police cars, fire engines, ambulances of your cities and counties, your state of California, and your federal government have made Rio Grande first in public service. Make it first in yours. pleasure to welcome again to Calling All Cars, a representative of the police department of San Rafael. We present Chief Saban Kane. The story we are to hear tonight should not have happened. It might not have happened if a prior sentence meted out to the criminal had been served. For sheer brutality, I doubt if the crime has been exceeded in San Rafael or in any other place. But for efficient police action, I know of no case that has been more speedily closed or more completely solved. The courage and coolness of the victim of this story contributed largely to the successful solution, which was made possible by the splendid cooperation of Sheriff Selmer and my officers. This story serves to show the value of keeping your head in an emergency, and it definitely proves what every thinking person already knows, that crime does not pay. <laughs> On the night of June 25th, 1937, a small roadster chugged into a filling station on the San Quentin Road near the outskirts of San Rafael. Think everything will be all right, Don? Oh, sure it will. Well, I hope you don't have any trouble on your first night. Oh, I won't have any trouble. <laughs> I'd think you'd be afraid staying out here by yourself. You know, afraid of being robbed or something. No, what should I be afraid? Nothing will happen to me. Oh, uh, you got anything to read? Mm, yeah, I got a detective story. That'll hold me for a while. Anyway, I got to keep this place cleaned up. I'll be busy enough. Well, I'll be seeing you. Okay, kid. See you tomorrow. Gosh, I didn't think it'd be this quiet. Yeah, it's a long way out here from town, all right. Kind of thought more cars drove by here. Well, I guess I better polish up the brass on the oil pump. <laughs> Things sure do get dirty around a place like this. Yeah, five, please. Yes, sir. Regular? That'll be all right. Nice weather we're having. Yes, it is. Uh, which road do you take to get to San Quentin? Uh, straight ahead, sir. <laughs> Most people don't want to get there, though. Well, I have to. 
Uh, say, I don't think the tank will hold five gallons. Well, whatever it takes. Well, that's, that's about all she'll stand. How many? Uh, four gallons. Mm. Uh, 72 cents, right? Mm. That's right, sir. Uh, how's the oil? It's okay. I'll get that windshield for you if you got a minute. No, it's clean enough. Want to get more bugs on it anyway. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. since I had a car in here. I wonder what time it is. Hmm. 2.15. Another customer. Yes, sir. Fill her up. Yes, sir. Say, it's a nice car you got here. I like it. Brand new, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, what you doing back there? How much you putting in? Well, you said fill her up. No, I didn't. I said give me five gallons. Oh, sorry, sir. I guess I misunderstood you. Uh, there's seven and a quarter in there now. Is that all right? Yeah, but there ain't nothing we can do about it now. Gee, I'm sorry. I thought you said... Never mind what you thought. I ain't got that much money with me. You'll have to cash your check. Well, uh, how much is the check for? Forty bucks. Oh, I'm afraid I haven't got that much. Well, look and see. Yes, sir. We haven't had many cars in tonight. I didn't take in much money. Uh, the boss told me not to cash checks except for the amount of the gas. Well, open her up and see if you can cash this one. Well, but the boss said I that I... I said what the boss said. Cram that door in your pocket and get moving. What do you mean? Take a look at this automatic and you'll get what I mean. Oh. Gosh. Hold on. Yeah. The kind of things you read about in the detective magazine. Well, what, do you, what do you want me to do? I just told you. Stop chattering and get that door. Yes, yes sir. Come on. Get a move on. All right. Go on, get in that car. Well, where are we going? What do you care? Get in. Uh, you mind if I have a cigarette? Nah, there's a pack on the seat there. Thanks. Uh, got a match? Ain't you got nothing but the habit? Yeah. matter with you? Ain't you never smoked before? Well, just nervous, I guess. Burn my finger. Yeah. You'll be a lot nervous, sir, before I get through with you. What are you gonna do? You'll find out soon enough. What was that? Nothing. I just broke the match. Oh. Still nervous, huh? Yeah. You're busy and count that money. Well, I, I, I know about how much is here. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, there's about $30. You see, I had about $30 change, and then I sold some gas. Uh, shut and up and give me it. Come on, get out. What are you going to do? Don't give me no argument. Get out. All right, all right, I'm getting out. You don't have to jerk my arm off. When I say move, I mean move. Get going. Ouch. That gun hurts. Don't poke it in my back so hard. Uh, shut up and stop whining. Into the woods. Okay. Uh, here, this is far enough. What are you going to do? Can't you say nothing but what are you going to do? I'm going to fix you so you won't talk. Come on, get your back against this tree. Get your hands back here. Oh, don't get the rope so tight. Pipe down and get back there. I'm going to fix you so you won't tell no tales about me. You know, it's funny how dead men can't do no talking. Oh, please don't kill me. Please don't. I won't talk. I promise uh, I won't. Shut up. Oh. I'll teach you to keep your trap shut. Don't try to get away. Where are you going? You're, you're not going to leave me here. Uh, I'll be right back with a tire iron. I can hit you harder with that. <laughs> Leaving his bleeding and insensate victim, the killer leaped into his car and drove slowly back to the main highway. Hours ticked by. Slowly the faint flickering of life steadied. The unconscious boy stirred, lifting his bleeding head. Listened for the sound of his captor, then feebly began tugging at the rope that bound him. I gotta get loose. I, I gotta get loose. Can't stay here. I gotta tell him. Tell him about the hold-up. The 
training of his Boy Scout days had stood Donald Ramey in good stead. He had been able to maintain slack in the ropes as the killer bound him. Now as he swayed from side to side, that slack permitted him to move, to wear the rope against the rough bark of the tree. If I could just get my hands loose. There. It's coming. I've got it. Now if I can get the other one. Loose. Oh, God. If I can just keep from passing out, oh, I'll make it. So the minutes ticked on with the boy struggling with the rope, wearing it against the tree. At last, the thick strands parted. The dazed boy pitched forward in the leaves, praying for strength, determined that his attacker should not escape. The wounded boy staggered to his feet and, clutching at the underbrush for support, made his tumbling way toward the road and helped. Twice he fell headlong as he staggered toward the highway. Each time he fought forward again. Mechanically, almost unconsciously, he made his way along the deserted road. For what seemed hours, the bleeding boy plodded along. At last, he caught sight of a house, almost two miles from the torture scene. Painfully, he made his way across the small porch and with his last ounce of strength, knocked on the door and then collapsed. officers and an ambulance for the injured boy, Meadow joined Cheatham at the service station. Hello, Tom. Uh, Find anything? Uh, not much. Found the boy's coat and a pile of newspapers. Yeah. And this chair was overturned. The cash register was open like it is now, and that's about all. All the money gone? Yeah, cleaned out. Who runs the place? Uh, Tim Daisy. He's gone out to see the boy's parents. Let's take a look around outside. Oh, I've uh, kept everybody out since I got here. There's been a couple of guys stopped for gas, but I didn't let them drive in. Good idea. We want all the tire prints we can find. There's a swell set of tire marks coming in and leaving the driveway. Yeah. Looks like the car got underway in a hurry, judging from the gravel he kicked up. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, here's the best set of tire marks. Right uh, here where the car drove out. Uh-huh. That is, assuming that the hold-up car made them. Well, it isn't likely anybody drive into a dark filling station. I guess you're right at that. Looks like these tracks are made by a car with new tires. Think we ought to photograph them? Oh, by all means. We might need them to help identify the bandit's car. Meantime, let's get out and talk to that boy. <laughs> Doctor, we're from the San Rafael Police Department. We want to talk with the Ramey boy if he's able to talk. Well, you can talk to him for just a little while. I brought him here to my house. He's too badly hurt to stand a trip to the hospital for a day or two. Uh, we'll be easy on him. Well, uh, right in here. Mm, looks pretty much banged up, doesn't he? Yeah. Don, 
Hmm? Can you talk, son? I... I think so. We're police officers, son. We want to find out about your case. Well, I'll help you all I can. Can you give us a description of the man, Don? He, he was sort of medium, I guess. Didn't look like a fat man. Mm-hmm. Was he light or dark? Uh, dark. Was he as tall as six feet? A little shorter. Did you say about 5'10"? Mm, yes, sir. They're light or dark eyes? They look black. Mm-hmm. Thin or kind of heavy eyebrows? Heavy. Did he have any kind of accent? Did he talk English well? He uh, had an accent. Uh, Italian, I think. Did he drive a big car or coupe? Uh, coupe. Old or new? New. Did you get the license number? Mm-mm. No, he had a dealer's number. Get that, Cheatham? Yeah. It was a green car. Green car? You know what make? Uh, Chevrolet, I think. Mm-hmm. Did you notice anything peculiar about the car, Don? Yeah. The speedometer wasn't connected. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Yeah. You'll, you'll find a broken match on the floor under the edge of the seat on the right-hand side. A broken match? Yeah. I remembered what the J-men said. Leave some clue in the car. They were kidnapped. So I broke a match and left it on the floor. I kicked it under the edge of the seat. Okay, son. We'll look for a broken match if we find a car that answers your description. And find ice pick by the tree. Ice pick? Yeah. That's, that's what he stabbed me with. Three times. Pull it out by the tree. Retracing as best they could the route over which the wounded boy had come, the officers at last arrived at the giant redwood where young Raymond had been held captive. Guess we better leave the car here. We don't want to disturb any footprints or tire marks that may be around here. Yeah, you're right. There should be some good prints in this soft dirt. Yeah, we better get some samples of this dust, too. Might be valuable later in identifying the car. The boy said they went up the trail to the right, didn't he? Yeah. That must be it right ahead there. I guess so. Hey, hey look. This is a place, all right. There are tire marks like those back at the filling station. Yep. They look the same, all right. I guess we better see what we can find out around that tree. Mm-hmm. Never get any footprints out of this stuff. Nah, there's too many leaves. Yeah, there's a big tree. Wonder if that's the one. Yeah, probably. It's the only big tree near here. Yeah. And there's a piece of rope. Oh, two pieces. Mm-hmm. Looks like everything is just as the boy said it was. He's probably right about the car and the holdup artist, too. Very likely. Let's get busy and find that ice pick. Looking for the lethal weapon, eh? Well, say, that's what it may turn out to be at that. Well, well, we don't have to look anymore. Here it is. Let's see it. Hmm. Better Ice Company, San Rafael, California. Looks like local boy makes good criminal. Looks that way. At least he must have been here long enough to pick up a local ice pick. Mm, I guess that's about all we'll find here. Yeah, I guess so. Did you get samples of that dirt from the road? Yeah. Well, we'll just take this rope and call it a day as far as this place goes. The officers returned to headquarters and acting under orders from Chief Kane and cooperating with Sheriff Selma begin the search for the missing car and its driver. The Ramey youth was again interviewed, and additional facts about the appearance of the bandit obtained. These were broadcast to peace officers throughout the state. Pulling all cars, attention all cars, pick up and hold for questioning. Suspect described as 25 or 26 years. Weight about 150 pounds. Wearing a dark blue suit, dark gray hat. This man speaks with an Italian accent. Accent. Suspect wanted in connection with hold up and kidnapping at service station, Irwin and San Quentin Road. Carried a blue steel automatic and drove a new Chevrolet Coupe. License unknown. 
Request cooperation Marin County Sheriff Office and all ranger stations in vicinity of Mount Tomo Pais and capture a bandit who held up and beat Donald Ramey in woods on Mount Tomo Pais this date. Suspect in this case is considered very dangerous man. Notify Kane, San Rafael Police. <laughs> with photographs of the tire marks left at the service station and at the scene of the assault, officers began a round of questioning various automobile dealers. Matt, I'm trying to trace a Chevrolet used in a holdup. That Ramey case, you know. Oh, yes. I read about that. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I don't know. I'm sort of looking for a needle in a haystack, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't. But if you let me in on it, I might be able to help you. Well, here's a picture of a tire impression. Can you tell me what kind of tire that is? Now, let's see. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a U.S. Royal. You use them on any of your cars? Uh, about half our cars carry Royals, and the rest of them car um, come equipped with Firestones. I see. Well, can you tell me how many new coupes you've sold in the last few days? Green ones? Uh, let me see. According to board up there, Miller sold a coupe on the 15th. Smith sold two on the 20th. Miller sold another one on the 22nd. Uh, that's all the coupes. Uh, one more thing. You any idea which one or, or how many of these cars had this royal tire as regular equipment? Not all fans. But the cards will show it. Wait a minute. Yeah, here we are. Well, that's a coincidence. All four of them had royals. Well, if you'll give me a list of those purchasers, I'll start rounding them up. Well, I don't mind giving you their names and addresses, but you'll find every one of them above suspicion. Maybe so, but right now I don't think anybody'd be in that class. <laughs> The automobile dealer was right. Though police checked every new car owner and investigated thoroughly each alibi, all were found to be able to account for their activities on the night of the crime. Then, as Middo cruises through the city with Officer Cheatham constantly on the lookout for the kidnapped car, they see a Chevrolet coupe parked on a secluded street. Hey, Cheatham. Yeah? There's a green Chevy coupe, the new car. It is at that. Let's take a closer look. Okay. It's got dealer plates on it, too. And now, if we can just find a broken match on the floor, we're getting somewhere. Sort of have a feeling we'll find that match, too. Uh, yep, here it is. Just like the kid said it'd be. This is the car, all right. It's obviously been driven, but there's no mileage registered on the speedometer. Don't you remember young Ramey said the speedometer didn't work? Here's the same kind of dust around the edge of this wheel rim that we found out on the Tamil Pius Road. Well, there's no doubt this is the car, all right. Next job is to find out who left it here. Well, we might start by tracing this number and finding out who owns the car. Mr. Ryan here tells me that this is one of the company's cars. You ever see it before? Why, sure. I didn't know it was gone till Mr. Ryan phoned, though. Have any idea who might have taken that car? Well, uh, let me see. Oh, Hey, I got an idea. Well, let's have it. There was a guy in here yesterday looking around. Said he was looking for a job. He made a peculiar remark. At least, it seems peculiar now. What was it? Well, he said, it sure would be easy for somebody to steal one of these cars. What did this bird look like? Oh, he was a dark guy. Sort of short. No, uh, maybe medium. Very dark complexion, shaggy eyebrows. Big for an accent? Oh, yeah. Anyway, his name was Columbo. Now, you would naturally expect him to have an accent. Oh, so you know his name, huh? Sure. I've seen him around several times. Still, we've no assurance he's the man that stole the car. I didn't say he was. I just said he was around here yesterday, and he made that remark. Any idea where this man lives? Well, he put the Cosmopolitan Hotel down on his application for a job. Okay, we'll check that. Meantime, don't let anybody handle that car. We'll want to get fingerprints off it. Okay by me, Lieutenant. At the hotel, officers found that Colombo had checked out two days before. Back at headquarters, meantime, experts had taken fingerprints from the stolen car, and in their files had found evidence that... Louis Colombo, sentenced to San Quentin, May 16th, 1934. Released July 3rd, 1936. Bad checks, charges from Mendocino County. 
Uses the alias Louis Coletti. Mug pictures of the suspect were taken to the hospital and shown Donald Ramey. The boy immediately identified them. That's the man. That's the one who held me up and beat me. He's the man. Fortified with this information and identification, the officers set forth to find their man. From associates of Colombo, the police learned that he was about to be married and learned the place where he worked. Then the suspect himself is located in the home of his sweetheart, arrested and brought to the office of Chief Saban Kane for questioning. Well, Colombo, what's your story? I ain't got nothing to say. I think you have. We've got enough dope on you now to hang you. You ain't got nothing on me. That, my friend, is wishful thinking on your part. We found your fingerprints all over the car that young Ramey was kidnapped in. We found the tire iron in the car, the iron you used to beat the boy. It had your fingerprints on it, too. I never hit him. We found your handprint on this ice pick you used to stab him. I didn't do what I tell you. The chemists tell us that the dust found in your trouser cuffs, that taken from the wheels of the car and from the running boards, is the same as that found at the place where you beat the boy. I didn't beat no boy. Beside all that, young Ramey has identified your picture as the man who beat him. Yeah, it's nuts. I never beat nobody. Now, look, Colombo, we know you're guilty. You can save us a lot of time and the state a lot of money by confessing. I've talked to Sheriff Selmer, and we're prepared to make a, a deal with you. What is it? Don't misunderstand us. We don't have to do it. We've got enough on you now. But we'll drop all charges except kidnapping if you confess. I got one other thing I want. What is it? I want to get married. Get married? Yeah, I got to get married before I go to jail. Well, uh, never mind, I got her. If I confess, will you send for my girl and let us get married? Well, I... No, I won't... Married? Well, I... No, I won't confess. I ain't got nothing to confess. Make it easy on yourself, Colombo. Will you do what I want? All right. It's a deal. All right. I did kidnap the kid. I did try to kill him. I didn't want him to spill. I had to have some money to get married on. Didn't occur to you to work for it? I had to have it right away. That's why I held up the kid and took him out to the woods. Then I got scared. I was afraid he'd tell the cops, so I tried to kill him. I thought I did a good job until I saw the papers the next morning. Then I knew the cops was after me. So I beat it to my girl's house. Didn't mind getting her into trouble, did you? Sure, I thought of that, but I wanted to see her. I don't know why she should want to see you. We love each other. We want to get married. Now, I spilled everything. I guess you won't keep your bargain, huh? That's where you're wrong. I always keep my word. You'll get to marry the girl. So why she should be willing to marry a bird like you is beyond me. On July 20th, Colombo stood before Superior Judge Edward I. Butler, who said, You're charged with kidnapping. You may not be familiar with the law on kidnapping. The penalty is death. No. No, 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 no. And since you've cooperated with the law enforcement bodies, and since you've thereby saved the state a great expense by confessing your crime, I'm going to be quite lenient with you. Your crime was a most cold-blooded one. The only remorse you've shown is that you were caught. In spite of all this, I'm still going to be lenient. Therefore, I sentence you to life imprisonment without pardon or parole. You will spend the remainder of your natural life in San Quentin Penitentiary. Life? Life? I've been cheated. It ain't fair. You can't do this to me. I'll get out. 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 I'll get, I'll get you every dirty rat that double crossed me. Take him out of here. I'll get you. I'll get out. I'll get out. Friends, like the broken match which Donald Ramey left in the cushion of his abductor's automobile, the selection of the right kind of gasoline may seem to be only a minor detail, but it can make a great difference in the way your car runs and hence in your motoring satisfaction, whether for business or pleasure. With the officials of many cities and counties and those of the state and... With the officials of many cities and counties and those of the state and federal governments are tens of thousands of motorists who depend upon Rio Grande cracked gasoline for the maximum efficiency of police car performance. Young Ramey took a leaf from the G-Man's book. You, too, will profit by the experience of others if you drive into the nearest red and white Rio Grande station the next time you need gasoline and take on a tank full of Rio Grande cracked, the gasoline that leads them all in public service.
San Rafael Police calling all cars. San Rafael Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. A cancellation broadcast 223 regarding a holdup and kidnapping. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rolls and closes.